It's freezing cold in the classroom, but these first graders are full of enthusiasm. They eagerly practice spelling. To be able to go to school is the most important thing for them. Otherwise, their time would be spent on the streets or in a refugee camp. Sana Marand is in charge of them. She's a businesswoman from northern Syria who also fled the conflict there. Single-handedly, she has established three schools for almost 1,000 kids. In wartime, you sometimes need to do unusual things and take a stand. When I came to Turkey, I didn't know where I should send my two children to school. That's how it is for many refugee families. I help people by establishing our own school. There are always setbacks, but I don't want to give up on this project. The school is called Torches of Freedom. It's a self-help project located 200 kilometers from the Syrian border. Refugee teachers teach refugee children. It's financed by private donations. Currently, there are over a million Syrian refugees living in Turkey. They are tolerated by the Turkish state, but the general rules regarding compulsory education do not apply to them. I went to a Turkish school, but I didn't understand anything there. In the geography lesson, the 10th graders are studying the map of their home country. But it's not just about learning facts. Learning how to interact with one another peacefully and respectfully is also part of the curriculum. Religious education plays just a minor role. When 15-year-old Fatih leaves school, the next children are already waiting to come in. Even with a shift system, the high demand can't be met. UNICEF says that of the three million Syrian child refugees, half have been cut off from education. We're lucky. In this city, most of the Syrian children of our age need to work in workshops or factories and can't go to school like us. After school, Fatih helps out in his family's shop. His father once owned two factories in the Syrian city of Aleppo before he had to flee because he had joined the opposition. They didn't want to stay in the reception camp. This small grocery store keeps the family afloat because the Turkish state allows refugees to work. <laughs> I depend entirely on Syrian customers. Only Syrians shop here. Turkish people come very rarely. We Syrians stick together, and that helps. But the son doesn't see a future for himself in Turkey. If I do well enough in school, I want to go to university in another country. More and more refugees are establishing themselves in cities. The Turkish neighbors of Masri's shop are not enthusiastic about it. They're worried about crime and competition with jobs. When they're in the camps, under the care of the state, everything's fine. But when they're here in the city, problems arise. The camps would be better for them, too. This boy comes from Syria, but he doesn't go to school. He runs deliveries for a kebab restaurant. How much do you earn for that? 20 lira? That's about 7 euros a week. Kara Manmaras has a population of around a million, 20,000 of which are Syrians. They've built new lives, opening shops and restaurants. Last summer saw the first riots here. Syrian shops and cars were vandalized. The tensions are rising. Nationalist politicians want to ban Arabic writing in public. The Syrians feel unwanted. Even on the school's playground wall, you can see anti-Syrian graffiti. Because of this, many refugees want to move on with their children to Europe or the USA. Even the school director, Sanabel Morandi, ideally wanted to go to Europe with her husband. But she decided to stay for the sake of the school children. We need to stand together and establish ourselves in Turkey over a long period of time. I no longer have any hope that we can return home soon. Without schools, there's no future for Syria, Morandi says. 
One day these children will need to rebuild their country, which has been destroyed by war.